Good afternoon. We are working on a fraction unit, and I have Cole and Ryoko here to help me uh, review a few of the topics that we have been working on. So the very, very first thing we did in our fractions unit was make some visual models for our fractions. So we had students practice with two different models. We went the bar model and what we usually affectionately call the pizza. This helped us visually take a look at fractions. We started things such as, here's our one whole. We've now divided it into two. Well, we now have one part of two and one part of two. Ryoko, what fraction does this model represent? Um, one half. One half and one half. This really helped our students as we went further into our fractions because the next one we talked about was thirds or taking one whole dividing into three equal parts to do that we do two lines so Ryoko what do these two models represent uh, one third one third this helped us students visually begin to start thinking that okay one part of two is actually greater. It's a larger amount than one part of three. This is difficult with fractions because students will look at the denominator and see that three and then think to themselves, well, three is bigger than two. But in this case, it means the whole has been divided into more parts, which are smaller. Um, we then moved on to something like fourths also did that. I actually just did that incorrectly. What I really like the students to do is to start, if they're doing fourths, Draw your model, draw a half, divide your halves and halves, because that gives us a better representation of what one fourth is. One of the things that we had was sorting fractions from least to greatest, in which case we would have a fraction that started if we're doing a number line. So here's zero. Here's a number line of one. If we have students and I say, can you please put two thirds, um, two fourths, one half on a number line. Halves, thirds, and fourths are very much our anchor fractions. That's what we want students to just know. Well, they can actually kind of create number models for these that'll help them determine which one is least or closest to zero, which one is closest to one. For example, there's my two thirds. There is my one half. So my halves and my halves for fourths. Ryoko, please tell me of these three fractions, which one is the least? Which one is closest to zero? Mm, one half. One half. Ryoko. I can see a small little mistake I have made. Where is two fourths going to go? Two fourths going to go like maybe in the middle. Very nice. Um, this is why visual models really help, even though I did a rather frantic, poorly drawn one here, is it really helps the students see, well, which one has more in it? We do a lot of like, hey, if we divided this sandwich, do you want this part or do you want that part? Two fourths is an equivalent also half and then looking over here cole what's our next fraction going to be where are we going to place two thirds um probably like near over there what i'd like to tell students to do is start at a half is it more than a half or is less than a half so cole taking a look at this is two thirds and looking at the shaded area that represents the two thirds is that more or less than one half mm, less I mean, more sorry. Hard to run the camera and answer questions at the same time. But this is also why we practice it, because if we can look at the two thirds, we can look at, we can begin to get a comparison. Fractions on a number line. Um, the one that we really kind of attempt to do is, can students go from zero to one? Can they find one half? can, they cut their halves and halves, and thus make those fourths, and 
can they look at a number line? And thirds is actually a difficult one. Decide, well, there's one third, there's two thirds. And Jim Campbell Cooper with Ren Colo and Thorn Pickett. Please report to P5. Again, Ren Colo and Thorn Pickett. Please report to P5. Thank you. Because from our fourths and our thirds, we can really get a long way. If a student understands halves, which then understands you can turn halves into fourths, well, fourths can become eighths. Same thing with thirds. We can turn thirds into sixths. What we are doing this week is drawing a little bit more complex fractions, something like, say, five eighths. This is on the homework. Where does five eighths go on a number line? Well, and here's our strategy. First, we're going to draw a number line. Real go. Read number two for us, please. Determine unit fractions. Determine what unit oh. fraction we're working on. So, in this case, what fraction are we working with, Real go? Five eighths. Eighths, which means eighths. that we have taken our whole and divided into eighths. That is our unit. Eighths in this case. So, Step three, find an equivalent to one half. Here is one half. Here is its equivalent amount of eighths. I did skip the, skip the part about making equivalent fractions, but one way that we do it is using the multiplication rule. Multiplication rule states that if you multiply a number, its denominator and its numerator times the same number, you will find an equivalent fraction. So in this case, we have go, what am I going to need to multiply two by? create eight. Four. Four. Have to do it to the numerator as well. Well now we have one half and we have renamed it as its equivalent amount of eights. Still the same number. Now that we know where half is, well let's put half in there. This is four eights. At the end, let's make this zero eights. And if we know that this is one whole, we'll go how many whole how many eighths do I need to have the one whole thing? Eight eighths. Eight eighths. If we can find half, we know this is zero, here's eight eighths. Well, if we're going to have to place five eighths, we can pretty much get really, really close. Five eighths would be right here. I see Cole's arms are getting tired, so I'm going to do one thing very, very quickly. Thank you so much. How to find an equivalent fraction? We can find equivalent fraction two ways. One using our visual model. Two, multiplication rule. If your student is given an equivalent fraction, for example, two thirds. One, two, we'll fill this into two thirds. All we do is say to them, how can we divide this so it's more units? Students can just visually divide their fraction into more parts. And this really helps them see that it is equivalent. It is the same amount of shaded area. It originally was two thirds. Well, now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That is now six ninths. Students can always use that visual model way of just drawing horizontal lines through an existing fraction. This really also goes with the multiplication rule I spoke about earlier, in which case, you can turn any fraction into its equivalent by finding out what number you're going to need to multiply them both by. Times 3 times 3 equals 6 ninths. I think that's as far as we've gotten so far this week. I know it's a lot. Um, number line, visual models, can students place them from least to greatest? on a number line and find an equivalent fraction is what this unit will be all about. If your student is doing that, um, they are off to a great start. If not, please tell them to ask questions and we'll keep practicing class. Thank you, Ryoko, and thank you to Cole. Go ahead and stop.